In this lesson, we're going to try and make a color controller uh, using the DMX uh, user interface we've been building. Now, this particular product has a different um, sort of color wheel to, to most lights. It doesn't have uh, RGB flags or CMY flags that would uh, you know, blend in. It's just got a fixed color wheel. So that kind of makes things easier and harder at the same time. Um, so we're going to demonstrate to you how to make that work. But later on, I'm going to show you how to do RGB mixing with an LED PAR uh, using a color picker, which would be an interesting uh, exploration of uh, creating RGB DMX values. So let's jump back into the console here. Um, we need to ultimately to get color information into this value too. Now, if it was RGB information, you would have three sets of color information. You'd have an R, a G, and a B. But we just need uh, raw data. And if we go back to our manual, let's drag this over. Uh, and go up to the color section. See here, we've got all the numbers that we need to be sent to make this um, uh, to make this fit the uh, uh, the map. So we could do the same way we did the gobos. We can enter all these numbers into an array. Uh, but I just want to demonstrate a different way of doing it, so I can show a different tool. It actually doesn't work quite as well, but it will um, it will help us out later when we do something quite interesting. We're going to try and build uh, a little color square that can change color. Uh, based on the input you put in. So we are going to build another spin box um, and I'm going to put it underneath my Gobo selector and I'm going to call it colour spelt with a U as should everybody because it's English and we speak English. So there is the, uh, the value um, minimum value and maximum value. Now what I want to demonstrate is that the, the range for the color wheel goes between, let's go back to the manual here, it goes from zero for white up to 173, value of 173. After that, it's starting to do mixed colors and then continuous rotations. So we need the DMX value to go from zero to 173. Now with the Gobo, what we did was we added each of those uh, numbers, the start number of all of these colors into an array so it knew where to go to. Uh, the problem with that, uh, it works fine for Gobo because you want that to be in a fixed place, but with the color wheel, you have this option to do split colors where you can get half and half. It's not really that great, but it's a feature that the light does and we haven't considered how we'd make that happen. So we don't want to have fixed values, we want to have a scaling value. So we need to go from zero to 173, but, there's 16 colors, right? So you don't know which value is what color. That's also a bit awkward. So we're gonna do something clever called a map, ramped, uh, map range clamp, which will take zero to 16 and scale it up for you to, uh, one to uh, zero to 173. So I'm gonna type in here, 16. In fact, that's not true, is it? I need, I've got 15 colors. Um, so we need 0 to 14, because that's 15 colours, because 0 is the first one, um, starting at 0. I'm going to leave the slider values for a moment, we'll come back to that. And we're going to use print strings here to make sure we're doing this right as we go. So I'm going to add a on value changed again. Drag this up to here, I'm going to put it on top so I'm running out of space. Let's move our test button out of the way. Nice little collection here. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to do a get and build an array. So let's build the array first. Um, no, we don't. No, we need a map range clamp. So we are going to take our data from the spin box and type in map range clamp. It came up straight away. Uh, uh, so unclamped. There's a difference. Unclamped. I'll just show you what a clamped one looks like. It looks exactly the same, doesn't it? Um, now I've seen it, I honestly can't tell you what the difference is, but we always use unclamped. I've always used unclamped. Anyway, the idea is you've got your in range and your out range. So you put numbers in, and if it goes from 0 to 16, or 0 to 15, did we type in? And then it's going to come out to, let's just get the data back from the manual. Do I remember, is it 173? Yeah, 
173. So 0 to 173. So now, when it's 0, it's going to produce a result of 0. If it's 15, it's going to produce a result of 173. And anywhere in between, it's going to scale it proportionally. So that's a clever way of changing values live in the Blueprint system. Um, so we need to set that now into an array, uh, or set it as a, um, as a value that's going to uh, go straight into the DMX setting. The reason I keep talking about arrays is because later on we need an array to call the, the color into the UI. We're not using arrays at the moment. That needs to go straight into here. So we just need to create another variable. Promote to variable. Uh, call that variable var underscore color. Enter. Um, and we're going to connect that up. So now when we spin that box, it's going to set the variable color and we're going to call it back over here. Again, we could have connected this straight in, but I just think this looks neater. Into our color value. There we go, look, we've almost finished it now. Nearly everything's got a value coming in. So we have a dimmer, a color, a gobo, a pan, a tilt, but we don't have a moment to shutter. That's the only thing left to do now. But let's check, first of all, the color's working. <clears throat> so we're going to compile, save. Let's go back into the DMX console and hit play and the lights reacted because it's got some new data let's turn the intensity on i'm trying to do this so that you can see it on my little screen let's put it over there you can sort of see it underneath the desk um, and now if we spin this box hopefully there we go we are changing the color and we've got 14 colors and each one represents a place now we can sort of split it between the two, that's a little bit of pink and yellow, which is why it's the advantage doing this. But hopefully if we just type in round numbers, maybe a little bit off, a little bit of a split, I might have a wrong number in there somewhere, but it's sort of jumping to the right color. Um, and we're gonna tidy that up a bit later when we do the UI, because what would be really nice is if we spin this and we can see the color in the UI, um, as a way of operating the equipment. Uh, the other thing is I, I do want to try and show you how to do a drop down box so that it can generate the number. So you go and click on red and it will it will then give you a, uh, a set uh, DMX range, just like we did for the, for the gobos. Uh, now it's possible to have uh, a fixed, this fixed variable, we can set it twice. We don't have to have just one, <clears throat> one slider controlling that variable. You could also set it again using a completely different command. It's always going to be a laser takes precedence. So you could have a button that simply says, make this red and it push in the DMX value that the manual says is needed to make it red. And you push that into that variable and it get picked up by the DMX fixture. The, um, the slider could then be changed and it will modify it. And whatever the latest in, uh, number it has from one of those variables will, uh, will be the latest one it will, it will cast to the DMX controller. Right, so we're going to stop that and we're going to do one last thing. We're going to build our, our strobing controls with the shutter module and then that's the entire fixture patched.